All right, here's part two of the study guide videos. This will be question six. So Diego is selling snacks for six dollars and half and drinks for half a price. So let me re return that. Diego sells snacks for six dollars and drinks for a half price. He sold $150 worth of snacks and drinks in one day. So $150 total. We're going to write an equation in standard form to represent the relationship between snacks S and drinks D and how it relates to the $150. So this here is going to be my total. This coefficient will represent the drinks and this coefficient will represent the snacks. So they told us that $6 is the cost of snacks. Drinks are half the price of a snack. So what is one half of six? Well, that's equal to three. So that means 6S plus 3D is equal to the $150 that they sold. Simple as that. All right, given given the graph of, a, of the equation of a line, so we're given this graph over here, okay, which of the following equations are parallel or perpendicular? So either parallel or perpendicular to the given line shown in the graph. Okay, so we're going to look at this equation and the first thing we need to do is determine the slope. or our m value, okay? So from this point, we can figure out what our slope is by looking at our intercepts. So first, this point is zero, negative four. And then we're gonna look at another point that goes through the x, and this point is going to be one, negative one. And we're going to use this x and y value to determine our slope or the easiest thing for me to do from a graph is just to count one, two, three. So I went up three. And then from here, I went over one. So plus one. So my slope of this line is equal to three over one, which simplifies to just three. So if my slope of this line is three and I'm looking for things that are parallel, parallel means that I have the same slope. So of these equations, the one that have the same slope are A and E. So I'm going to select A and E because those two are parallel. Now perpendicular, remember, is a little bit trickier. Perpendicular is your opposite reciprocal slope, and I'm just going to abbreviate. So remember, opposite means that if it's positive, like here we have a positive three, it's going to become negative. So our re opposite reciprocal slope is going to be equal to a negative one over three because one over three is the reciprocal of three. So ones that have the equation of negative or slope of negative one third are right here and right here. So these two lines would be perpendicular to the given line. Those are my four correct answer choices. Four correct answers. Okay, moving on to question eight. The coordinate plane shows the point P. Okay, so we have this point, negative four, negative two in the line f of x. So this is the line f of x. And they even gave you the equation of the line so we can easily identify the slope of this line. The slope of this line is negative 1 over 2. Now I need to write an equation in point slope form that passes through the point p and is perpendicular to the line f of x. So if the line has to be perpendicular, that means the slope of my line is going to become a positive two. 
positive because negative, the opposite of negative is a positive, and two because the reciprocal of one half is two. So the slope is going to be two, and then we're going to use the point P, negative four, negative two. So I'll write that here, negative four, two. Remember, this is my X, this is my Y, and I'm going to plug that into point slope form. So it's going to be y minus 2 is equal to 2 multiplied by x minus a negative 4. Okay, the negative 4 came from the ordered pair. The 2 also came from the ordered pair. However, because we have a double negative here, we have to change that or simplify it to be a positive. So my final answer is y minus 2 is equal to 2 times x plus 4. Okay, that would be your final answer in point slope form. Okay, moving on to question 9. In the coordinate plane, line n is represented in the equation with the equation 3x minus y is equal to 7 we need to write an equation of a line that is parallel to line n and passes through the point 1, 5, okay? So, again, this is my x, this is my y, and I need to find the value of b. So this is what the question is asking. So the first thing we need to do is write this equation in slope-intercept form. So if we have 3x minus y is equal to 7, I am going to subtract 3x from both sides. So this cancels out, and I end up with negative y is equal to negative 3x plus 7. Now, I need to get rid of the negative. So if I multiply the whole equation by negative 1, then this becomes a positive y, this becomes a positive 3x, and this becomes a negative 7. So this is just your line n, okay? So if this equation right here is my line n, I know that the slope of line n is equal to 3. And so the slope of my parallel line will also be equal to 3. Now I have to find the value of b for the line that passes through this point. So I'm going to use my slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and I can plug in the slope, my x, and my y to then find my b. So 5 is equal to my slope of 3, times my x of 1 plus b, so 5 is equal to 3 plus b, subtract 3, subtract 3, 2 is equal to b. That is probably one of the hardest questions on the test that you're going to see. If you can figure it out, good job. So b is equal to 2. All right, question number 10. Here, Samantha measured the height of her plant. So height of her plant, which is going to be her y values, each week and graph the data as shown. So which two variables, which two variable linear equations suggest the linear association of height h in the plant in terms of weeks w? Okay, so we need to write an equation for this line. So the first thing we need to do is sketch a line of fit. So this is my line of fit. And I need to write an equation for my line of fit. So I'm going to use the points that fall on the line. So the value of this point is 530. And the value of this point is 215. So if I find the slope of this line, I'm going to do 30 minus 15 over 
5 minus 2, which is going to be 15 divided by 3, which gives me a slope of 5. So because my slope of this line is 5, I see that the only answer choice that has a slope of 5 is A. But let's take a look and double check our y-intercept. It says the y-intercept is 5. Well, if I look at the line that I sketched, I do notice that my y-intercept is equal to 5 here as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and select A as my best answer. Now you can look at the other answer choices. However, you'll notice that the y-intercepts and the slope don't match up to what should be your line of fit. Okay, that's going to be it. I'm going to go do question 11 on the next video.